Cops often feel they have all the authority in the world and can do as they wish. However, they are wrong, and there are times when they are stopped by their own fellow officers. Just like this guy who learned a pretty good lesson from his senior. But you, you, can, to speak, you, can, you can speak to him. Okay. Yeah, but you'll be in handcuffs and it'll be at the jail. Careful what, what, when you get into whatever you're doing. Not you being detained. In January 2017, First Amendment auditor Philip Turner was walking down the street when he observed several police officers making an arrest. He soon got his camera out and started to record the incident. However, just a minute into it, one of the officers came over to him. The deputy had no clue about the laws and kept instructing the auditor to stop recording and go away. However, he had no idea that he was up against someone who had way more knowledge about the law than he did. Hey, did they give you permission to film inside their truck? I don't need permission on public. In public? In somebody's, in somebody's vehicle? I don't need permission on public. No, not to film us, you're correct. But to film inside somebody's vehicle, that's an extension of their house, and that is a private place. So you do need somebody's permission to film inside their vehicle. But is that a crime? Uh, if they decided it is, yes. Who's they? The two we got in the back of our cars. If they don't want you filming or they you didn't get permission from them, you can't be filming inside their cars. Well, you so guys got the door open. I, Look, all I'm asking you to do is go stand back over where you were. Even if I was back there, I could still see inside the okay, car. Okay, so go stand back over there. It's simple as that. And right now, now that I'm having to come over here and ask you to move again, now you're interfering with our investigation because instead of me being able to focus over here, I got to focus on you. So if you could just go stand over there, I can call a supervisor if you'd like to speak to a supervisor. Yeah, you can go ahead and call a supervisor. You can make any complaints you'd like, but I'm, all I'm asking you to do is go stand back over there where you were. Just go ahead and call a supervisor. Okay, do me a favor, go stand back over there for me, all right, bud? I don't see what's wrong being here. I'm asking you to go stand back where you were. Turner refused to be intimidated by the deputy and didn't leave the place. Eventually, the tyrant deputy had to step back. There was not an issue where you're standing, where you were standing. Now there's an issue where you're at. Right? Because I'm filming us the truck, right? Yes, sir. You can film us all you want. We don't care. We want you to do it from a safe distance. So if you could go back to where you were, that'd be uh, greatly appreciated. All right. if, if the issue is with me filming here inside the truck, I won't film inside the truck. If you can go stand back where you were, please. There's not an issue with you filming us. There's an issue with you getting any closer to the scene. I'm not getting any closer than here. Okay. Do not move from here. All right? Any closer from here, we're, we're going to have any, any more issues, okay? I, I, I already told you I'm not moving from here. Okay. That's it. Thank you. I encourage you to film. Thank you. However, the altercation was far from over, as just a few minutes later, the deputy returned threatening the auditor that a supervisor was on his way. The sergeant's here, he said he'd be over here talking to you just a little bit, okay? What's that? Our, our sergeant? He said he's gonna be over here talking to you just a little bit. He's here, he's actually... All right, you got a business card or anything? A business card? Yeah. Not on me, I can get you one out of my car in a little bit. All right, cool. Uh, you need my name, badge number, what do you need? Yeah, that's what I was gonna, that was, that's what I was gonna need, but I can't hear all the highway noise. Okay, so... You need all of our badge numbers? or Just yours, and uh, I guess if that's why needs to speak with me, I'll talk to him. Oh, he doesn't need to speak to you. I thought you wanted to speak to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to him. I mean, if you don't, want, if you don't need to speak to him, then I'll tell him not to waste his time. No, no, he's already here, so I'm not going to waste his time. You're already over here, so I'll talk to him briefly. Okay. Okay. And like I said, he'll be more than happy to give you anybody's name or badge number that's here. Okay. Um, and if you need business cards or anything like that, you give us a little bit, we'll be able to get some business cards too if you'd like. No, just yours, that's it. Okay. Yeah. I, can, I can get you one. Okay. All right, hang for me. Surprisingly, the deputy had a change of mind, and instead of asking him to stop recording, he started to demand his ID. Turner was well aware of his constitutional rights and didn't give in. Do you have, do you have your information? Your driver's license? What's that? Do you have your driver's license or name dead birth? For what? Well, because now you're a witness to this crime that we're doing. What crime is that? The crime that we got these people in the back of these cars for. I don't know what crime they committed. You don't have to know. Oh, well, okay, well, how do I know what they did, though? I don't know what they did. Okay, they broke the law. They're in possession of narcotics. That's why they're in the back of our cars. Okay, now you're telling me that. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have your name and date of birth? No. Or a driver's license? No. 
So you're going to refuse to be listed as a witness since you're, you sat here and videotaped the entire scene? If you need a copy of the video, I can give you a copy of the video. Well, yeah, but we're also going to need to identify you in our report that you were here videoing, so when we come to get a copy of that video, we can get that. All right, let me talk to your supervisor. If you think this cop was being a tyrant, wait till you see what this next cop had to say, as he immediately threatened him with an illegal arrast. He said that he won't want to give us our name, his name or date of birth until he talks to our supervisor. So. And you're probably going to end up going to jail, because right now you're witnessing a crime. Well, I asked to talk to a supervisor. He's here, so why can I speak with him? Because you're refusing to give your information, you'll be going to jail for failure to identify as you're a witness to a crime. So I need to give you my so I need to give you my ID to speak to your supervisor? Is that what you're telling me? No. Okay, I didn't speak why, to your supervisor. Why do you need to speak to your supervisor? Because I requested what to speak to him. That? Because I requested to speak to him and he's here. Okay. So what's your point? He's here, I need to speak with him. He's got you've got no part of the scene, right? But you, you want can, to speak to our supervisor. You can you can speak to him. Okay. Yeah, but you'll be in handcuffs and it'll be at the jail. Is that what you want to do? I need to speak to your supervisor. Is that what you want to do? I need do? to speak to your supervisor. However, the deputies had no legal reason to arrest him and were trying to make up some charges on their own. Why don't you understand it? You put yourself in this situation right here. You see that? You're on, on private what? property. Private right now. or public? You're on private property right now. Okay, what does that what does that have to do with the thing? Do you have permission to be here? Did the owner trespass me? Well, he actually, this guy- He doesn't want you here. This guy actually did call and tell us he wanted you to leave. That guy right there? Yeah. So, what's his name? What's your point? What's, his, what's the guy's name that don't want me here? So, do you want to identify yourself so we can list you as a witness to this crime, or? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking a simple question. The guy that you just talked to, he doesn't want me here. Yes. So, is he trying to like for me to go ask him to tell you to leave himself? Don't you, do you already have that notice? Yes, he told us when he came over here and gave me his business Then why card. do you have to go ask him then? If you would like for him to tell you himself. He can tell me whatever if, he needs to do. If, you, if, if he, he needs to tell me to leave, I'll leave. Simple as that. He needs, yeah. to, give me a, he needs to give me a warning before I before you can trespass. Turner, however, refused to give in even after these threats, as he was aware that he was following the law. After some minutes of waiting, a supervisor arrived on the scene, and Turner began explaining everything to him. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, do you mind if I go on your property and talk to him, or? Hang out here. He can hang out here. Oh, no, no, like, you was, can hang out, he can hang out. No, no, I was asking if we can go over there, because the road noise, I can't, I'm not able to hear you. Oh, uh, well, we're leaving here in a minute anyway. Okay. So, what's up? All right, so, before I leave here, I just need to get his badge number and his, uh, or his business card, whatever the case may be. It's Deputy Cameron Chelly. 315 is my badge number. Okay. okay. All right, so, my only problem is, I was just, here. Um, but this is what I do. I film what public officials do on public property. I'm a journalist. I gather content for stories. That's cool. Uh, but this officer here was telling me that I had to move back over there. I couldn't stand over there. And I was asking him why. He told me that I, I wasn't allowed to film inside the vehicle here. But I mean, that's that's how, that's their privacy too. We got to get their consent to go in. So what makes it any different for you? Well, that's to go in. Yeah. But I'm not going in. I'm just I'm just observing. That's kind of like equivalent to this is his property, but I can't film it because it's okay. on his property. Okay. You know okay. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't make sense and it's not against the law. Okay. So he needs to get educated on that because okay. that's <laughs> clearly not the case. Okay? Okay. okay. Now, am I currently being detained here or am I free to go? One relief was that the supervisor had no problem with Turner recording the scene, agreeing that he had every right to film the cops. However, just like his subordinates, the supervisor began to demand ID from the auditor, which Turner felt was completely baseless. I just spoke to the sergeant, so I need to get your name and date of birth. So I, I can, can give you a copy of the vehicle. I can give you a copy of the video. I don't need a copy of the vehicle. I can give you a business card. I need card. your identifying information so I can list you, you in the report ID in the as a witness. Yeah, you're I, a witness. I, I right now, you're failing to ID as a witness to a crime. What crime? Like, hey, like, hey, what's, what's your first name, man? I'm, I know what I'm, what's your first name, sir? I'll give you my first name. It's Philip. Philip. Yes, Philip. I'll give you that. Best case scenario. Let's get in jail. That female and that male says that we did something against the law. Eight cops. Eight cops against one 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 person, right? So you know who I would want? I would want the guy who's not even involved in this to be my witness. That's how it works. Like I said, this is what no, I no, do. No, no, that's how it works. No, that's what we're trying to explain to you. So any as a witness? Because you're, you're part of a, you're part of a, it's, you're part of any type of information that anybody comes in. We're going to have to ID him because he's in our cameras now. Yep. Just, once again, Turner confidently stood his ground as he knew that the cops had no legal grounds to demand his ID. Just then, the previous deputy, who had been a tyrant throughout, asked a hilarious question that even shocked the auditor. And they see you standing here and they're going to be like, well, who's this guy? Did he have anything to do with the scene? Well, why didn't you identify him? So that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Where did you come from? That's not relevant. It's not relevant? No, it's not. So you just, How do we know you didn't get out of this vehicle? Really? behind and you're with them and you walked over. Did you, did you just people? really ask me that? I don't, did 
Did I seriously just ask you that? Is that a serious question? Yeah, it actually is a serious question. Why would you randomly walk up to this and then fail to identify yourself? I already told your supervisor what I do. I'm That's a journalist. Really, I really don't care what you do. It doesn't matter. So, you have a question? Uh, no, I just I just made on this business card and I'm out of here. That's it. I gave you I gave you my name and badge number. I asked for a business card. You said you well, I told you I don't have it. Have you don't have it. We don't we all don't have any man. Okay, what's your name and badge number? My name is Cameron Jelly and my badge number is three one five. Okay, thank you. For right, now. Like I said, I already told you, I'm a journalist, I gave a contact for stores. The deputy kept intimidating the auditor without any reason. Turner, however, kept ignoring him and was only focused on the supervisor. Are you gonna give you your name and date of birth or not? I'm talking to a sergeant right now. He's, he's not talking to you. He's on the phone. I'm not talking to you either. I'm talking to you. It doesn't matter. Guess what? We both have the same job. We he's a higher rank one than you. Way or another. He's a higher rank than you. That's why I speak. That's why this is who I have to speak with. He's here, that's so great. that's who I'm speaking with. That's great. Okay. But I made contact with you before he did. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not sure you're really versed in the law good enough in the fact that you're failing to ID. On request you by will ID or you will not leave here. I'm talking to you. So I'm talking to your supervisor right now. What would you say your first name was again? What? What you say your first name was again? He told him. I just forgot it. Because I would like to address you by first name. You can address me by sir. Okay, Mister. That's when the sergeant pulled him aside and tried to calm him down. It was at this point that he even expressed concerns about the actions of his deputies. Sorry, man. You're not doing anything wrong. And. Uh, but here's the deal. They got a point there. I mean, this your worst case scenario is that your camera would be a part of evidence. But we're not going to go there because I have a camera. I have plenty of cameras going, so I don't need your camera. Now, if something were to happen to where, man, we get into a shooting or something or a fight and somebody gets hurt, then you know what? I'm taking your camera because that's all. So you got to be careful with that in the, lot, in the future. Okay, when you're doing this, because, but, but because on that one, I, I'll tell you, no, 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 there was no. a shooting on Sixth Street that happened not too long ago. And I help aid it them catching the shooter. And, and, and I have no problem with that. No, no, no. But that, but that's what that's what's called evidence um, from the beginning to the end because these guys are up to no good. Technically, I didn't come up here um, at the very beginning. I came here when they were already in, when they were set on the on the curb right there. Yeah. They were being handcuffed. I didn't see anything come out the car. All I know is I saw a drug go around the car. Uh, I mean, a dog go around the car, and that was it. The next thing I know, I see them put things in brown bags, and that's it. I don't know what happened until that officer came over and told me they're being arrested for narcotics. I was like, oh, oh, okay. But I mean, you can't, as a witness, you can't feed me that type of information. So then I wouldn't be a credible witness. Despite the sergeant initially demanding his ID, he soon figured out that he had committed no crimes and was not legally obliged to produce one. Therefore, he proceeded to let him go and continue with his business. Just telling you, the worst case scenario, if something were major, yeah, we would need as much as we could. Okay. I mean, uh, so just, just be careful with what, when you get into whatever you're doing. I know this is not the first time, it's going to be the last time. Uh, I, I deal with this type of interaction all the time. I, I, this is not the type of interaction I, I would like to. Uh, you're not being detained. Home. You're you're the only reason these guys. I know that they want to get my information, but I'm telling you, I didn't see anything. And I'm not going to lie and say I saw something that I didn't see. That's just point blank and period. I told you what I saw. I saw them put a case in a brown bag and some clothes in a brown bag. That's it. I don't. I didn't see any narcotics. So you said. Sir, Philip. First name is Philip. And it's been one of those days, man. So yeah, what's a good contact info for you? I, I got a business card in the car, and I can give you that. And you, you can just walk across and I'll put up this uh, room. Okay. All right. All right. Hi, right, man. Be careful. Turner soon left the place, but he was not done yet as he went over to file a complaint against these deputies at the Comal County Sheriff's Office. He has not shared any updates regarding the complaints, but there is a high chance that the tyrants were not even disciplined. Well, if you think these cops had a tussle, you'll be shocked to find out what happened between these next officers. So, so I got a call to go to. I can't go to the car because y'all want to play stupid ass childish game. It ain't not. No, it ain't because of me, man. I got nothing to do with that. On July 16, 2022, several Columbia Columbus police officers reached the Muskogee County Jail with their inmates to book them in. However, they were surprised to learn that the sheriff's office had implemented a new policy. Sheriff's deputies inmates were to be booked first, followed by state troopers, and finally, police officers. They won't let us in. They won't let y'all in. They won't let me in. Oh, God, ain't that right? Hmm? Ain't that right? Nah, you go in there before us, I'm gonna race hell. Watch this. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
I'm gonna file. I'm gonna file a complaint. A legitimate complaint. Am I with you? The mean bun. Go at home. Boom. Out of here. Central. SB one, please. Lieutenant Ness, you're about to get a complaint. One hundred percent. That is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen in my life. Hey. Things got even worse when a sheriff's deputy arrived and directly went inside the jail. This led to an uproar among the cops who had been waiting. Oh, don't yell it. Don't start yelling. Hey, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm going to file a complaint. That's fine. That's fine. Good, how are you? Tell them. Y'all have directors, I have directors. Sheriff says ain't nobody coming in, only five at a time. SO and G and GSP has priority. So or SO has priority even though. GSP, thank you guys. I mean, this is beyond my control. I don't have any so don't yell at me. All right. As soon as that last one gets cleared, I'm going to bring in five. Hey, yeah, unless another SO unit shows up. This is not my decision. Because I'm about to have, I'm about to have a stroke. As one thing led to another, the police officers felt poorly treated by the sheriff's office as they claimed that both institutions didn't work so well together. This is a failure of justice. And the jail does not like us, so we have five people sitting here outside waiting. It's wonderful. The sheriff is very pissed with us, okay? And he runs the jail, so. However, things were about to go from bad to worse when a police officer parked his vehicle right behind a deputy's car to not let him go out. As soon as the deputy found out about this, he began shouting in anger. Wait, man, wait, wait. Them, them goddamn supervisors can I understand. Fix I get, I so get that. Get I get that. So I can get the out the, the way. Same. Alright, so, so I got a call to go to. I can't go to the car because y'all want to play stupid ass childish game. It ain't not, no, it ain't because of me, man. I got nothing to do with that. George, I got nothing to do with that in there. It ain't my goddamn call. It's between the sheriff and the guy that works over there. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Move the goddamn car or I'm going to move the myself. Go move it. How you going to move it? Move Move the goddamn car, man. Why? Huh? In that park. Y'all acting like a bunch of goddamn kids, man. Uh, I'm gonna go get my stuff because this is getting stupid. Things were starting to heat up as the deputy kept voicing his anger. In his defense, it wasn't his fault as he was just following orders. Maybe the cops were taking out their anger on the wrong person. I'm not gonna be de-armed outside of the jail. Seeing the situation escalate, the poor deputy had no choice but to call his supervisor to come over and assist with this odd situation. I don't know, but I'm, I'm probably gonna quit. This is this is so stupid. Back it up so we don't have to bring his ass. Listen, man, I'm only doing what my supervisor told me. I understand. I, this is ridiculous, and I and I hate that I'm dealing with this shit. But you're gonna have to talk to the sergeant over there. No, I'll be talking to the chief. Hey, Chief, I'm sorry. We got a situation over here. We got CPD won't let our guys out. And they're about to give go to blows. I'm asking your CPD officer to back Word. up his car. And this, he's saying that his supervisor told him not to let it. And again, no one no one on so our side is threatening. A, we're having a tit for tat over here. Hold on, hold on. Roll down your window. Here you go. Talk to your Chief. 
The deputy started to pressure the officer who had blocked their car. It wasn't his decision. He was just following orders from his senior and wasn't very pleased with it himself. Oh, yeah. uh, we gotta stop playing these guys. This is, this is retarded. Yes. I know most of us are kind of at a standstill. Do I have anybody on Forest Road reference to 7511? Hey, sorry, we got it. Uh, hey, we're all standing on the wall of the jail. How you doing that? Who is here? Hey, move your car, bro. Fantastic. All right, well, I don't get who, who your sergeant is. He, hey, he's with the chief. Okay. Sorry, sorry, he's with the chief. He's with the chief. I'm sorry. What, what's your name? I hear you. I hear you. What is it, Sally Moore? Yes, sir. Hey, go ahead and back it up. Back it up. All right. Hey, Fairbanks, no. You stay right there, man. Hey, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, your sergeant over here tell him not to move. That's when he decided to pull his car out of there. But as soon as he was about to do that, the sergeant showed up and refused to give in, further escalating the situation. It is lava. Uh I try to get through, and they immediately halfway open and shut it on me. And I hear through the there's a deputy sentence behind on the radio that female officer is trying to get get into the door. Do not let her in that door. Do not let any officer through that door. From PD. From from the jailer. The jailer is just saying that through their radio. So they won't even let us through the door. There is one person inside there. And now they let the sheriff, they booked the sheriff guys out not in. The Columbus police officers were losing their patience as it had been hours since they had been stranded with their inmates. At this time of night, they had nowhere to go. He's like he screaming at us to move our vehicles. They won't even let any of our guys in. They won't book any of our guys. They won't even let us in to use the bathroom, nothing. Nothing. This is the. I think this is where. This is it. This like, is this, this is, is it. As, this is as bad as it can get. Like we can't principle someone's crime, man. This, yeah. yeah, this is as bad as it's. It's pretty bad, dude. Because it's this really bad. That deputy was about. He was saying, "I'm about to arrest you for obstruction." Yeah. To me. Yeah. Because this guy's got a call. But then my sergeant's telling me not to move. Right. I have this. And then when I started back, and um, he told me to stop again. Dude. Okay. What about arrested all of them for not doing their job? All right. Okay. This is crazy. Embarrassing. These cops were visibly upset, but nothing could be done. Therefore, they decided to release their prisoners with court summons. Releasing prisoners in the open could turn out to be a pretty bad decision, but these cops had no other option. The officers were clearly being treated poorly by the sheriff's office, but some days later, the police chief and sheriff met and decided to put their disagreements aside and start a new journey together. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we saw cases where police officers went up against each other and the bad ones were taught a lesson. Particularly concerning was the second case where cops and sheriff's deputies clashed for hours. The officers ignored other emergency calls, focusing instead on their internal quarrels. We hope that these officers can sit down and reconcile to ensure such unfortunate incidents are never repeated. If you agree with me, then please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.